and I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Michael Walt, who's been nicknamed the blood detective for his keen ability to zero in on health problems and find natural solutions. Dr. Walt also holds several degrees and certifications, just a couple, including board certifications in nutrition. Now, Dr. Walt, we have some questions that people have sent us through email on today's topic of detoxification and acid-based balance mm-hmm. that they would like some answers okay. to. Okay, so Caroline would like your comments on what you think the very best detoxification diet is. She would also like to know the best nutritional supplements to take for detox. She wants to lose weight and just in general rid her body of the toxins. Just a couple small little things. Just, uh, just a few. That's okay. Yeah. Uh, well, this whole concept of detoxification and acid-base balance is, is huge. So let me first give a quick little definition of detoxification and this acid-base thing and then we'll answer Caroline's question. So detoxification is the process that the body uses to remove itself of, of toxins. Um, and toxins are substances that in certain amounts in the body are incompatible with health and cause all sorts of health problems. So our liver is the main organ of detoxification, although many cells detoxify. Our intestinal tracts certainly have a role in detoxification and, uh, and our kidneys. But even the lungs, skin, cardiovascular system, they all play a role in detox. So given uh, one's health and what issues they may have in one or more of those areas, what they need for detox may be very different, you see. so. I would uh, urge some caution when people read or hear things that say, this is the best detox plan, this is the best t- detox substance or compound or mm-hmm. tea, because first of all, we need to know what it is we're detoxing. If someone is detoxing, let's say, mercury, well, you're not going to do that with chlorella, uh, although some would insist you could. Mm-hmm. Uh, the bottom line is we have known uh, compounds, nutritional compounds, for the specific toxins like mercury or aluminum or lead or uh, or estrogen toxins or any number of things. The liver has six major detox pathways and we actually know what nutrients they require. So some of those pathways require, uh, well one requires glutathione, another cysteine, another glycine. So if you want to fundamentally feed yourself the nutrition it needs for detoxification of a myriad of toxins, so we can never know what they all are, but they all have to filter through, or many of them, most of them, through our liver, Mm -hmm. then you have to include at least those nutrients, which you'd find in protein foods. Proteins will have glycine, uh, cysteine, and glutathione, for example. But a person may not absorb normally or need a lot more to remove one or more toxins, so they may need to take supplements of that. So before we design a detox program for any of our patients, we have to first know what their toxins are, but not just know what the end point is, like, okay, what's the toxin? Why was that person uh, bioaccumulating that toxin? Most of our patients who have, let's say, toxic mercury or aluminum, it's not because they're exposed to too much of those metals. It's because they don't detoxify them on a regular basis and they accumulate them over time. Sometimes toxins, uh, we, you know, in order to detox properly, we need to identify where these toxins are coming from. If, if certain toxins like, like mercury or arsenic you know, are, are, are very high in a person's, let's say, urine or their blood, no amount of oral nutritional supplementation or detox teas or plans will manage that person's detoxification unless we also look at the environment and say, oh, well, those things are found in fish. So we need to eliminate fish entirely for, let's say, six weeks, and then we check levels and all of that. And then there are different tests that we can use to, first of all, identify the toxins, and then over time, we need to retest people as we're going through a detoxification plan with them to make sure that the toxins actually are leaving. Which begs the question, you know, what are the best uh, tests for detoxification? Again, we have um, information on our website at uh, www.intmedny.com about uh, helping figure that out. Because, again, most people are taking a very haphazard approach to this. And uh, even that approach can help someone feel better. But we want to fix these things and remove sure. these toxins. So the, the testing matters, not just for the toxins, but what's important to know is the toxin or toxins is the end result of a failure of the body to get rid of it of the toxin as you're exposed to it. So we just don't want to take a nutrient, let's say, like N-acetylcysteine that binds to mercury and chelates it or removes it out. 
we also want to say, well, okay, well, what is the liver not doing to make normal detoxifiers? So we don't just want to focus on the toxin, but use that as an opportunity to say, okay, let's improve the health of this person. And we may have to do a bunch of other health tests that are not necessarily detox tests to figure out what a person needs. So let's see, Carol's asking, like, what are the best, like, supplements? As I mentioned, supplements depend on the toxin. Uh, but, but in general, protein is very important for uh, detoxification because it contains a lot of the nutrition required for detoxification. And, uh, and then she wants to, to lose weight. Now, what many people don't think about with weight issues and toxicity is that if we have toxins, many toxins that we're exposed to are fat-soluble. That means they stay in the body for a long time in fat tissue. If they were water soluble, we can just they exit the body right through the urine, right mm -hmm. through the kidneys. But if think of, of this space here as fat tissue, as a reservoir, and if we have toxins in the body, they'll be diluted in this reservoir. So if you uh, try to lose weight by, let's say, reducing calories and exercising, mm -hmm. you'll squish down the total fat load, but you're just concentrating the toxins. And then the weight usually bounces back on and we get, you know, more weight than sure. what we, you know, had an issue with in the first place. So if we remove the toxins, then it's a lot easier to burn fat. So we always go through a detoxification plan first and then a fat bur burning uh, weight loss management phase two afterwards. Great. So again, loaded topic. Uh, I'll quickly mention to the whole acid base thing. Uh, many people have heard that you know alkaline is a good thing for the body mm -hmm. and acid is a bad thing. Well, that's really um, a confusing way and inaccurate way of thinking about it. In short, we need to have a certain pH, which is an acid base balance in the body in different places. Otherwise, organs don't work well. We should be alkaline in our mouths, we should be acid in our stomachs, slightly mm -hmm. alkaline in our small intestines, slightly acid in our colon. Our blood pH is at, you know, the venous and the arterial need to be, you know, near the neutral side of things. So to say that we should be alkaline makes no sense. That's really complex. Yeah, but the reason why it's important from a weight loss detox perspective is certain toxins will exit the body when the urine pH is normal. So certain pHs have the body either bioaccumulate toxins or, or not, or get rid of them or not more easily. So we always, that's why we grouped the whole detoxification question into the uh, pH question, which again is an acid-base issue, very, very important. And if we think we're just going to eat alkaline foods, well, that's a misnomer too. Because, for example, uh, chicken is not an alkaline food, it's a, a, an acid-forming food, but it has proteins and amino acids that we need for detox, you see. So here's how a so-called acid food can help us become more alkaline, let's say, in our small intestine where we need to be by consuming a food that's actually acid because that's what we need. You'll have to listen to this video maybe a couple yeah. of times, and there's some articles on our blog about this. Okay. But it's very, very easy to put into action, but there's a lot of confusion about this, even among uh, clinical nutritionists. So we'll leave, we'll leave this topic mm -hmm. here. It's such yeah. a complicated one, but thanks for joining us.